Now, <clears throat> for this particular uh, session, I just have the example, is sexual orientation a predictor of email hours per week and also of family income? And I selected these variables from the uh, GSS uh, 2014 data set. Um, I just randomly selected those. Well, actually, it wasn't random. I looked for something. I looked for sexual orientation, which had multiple groups, and then I, I sought out two, um, two independent. I'm sorry, um, two dependent variables, which are on a scale. One is email hours per week, and also family income. And to run this in SPSS, we we launch our SPSS, and then we use the uh, drop-down menu for analyze, where we go for all of our statistical tests. Um, we go down, we drop down to the general linear model, and then we use the uh, side uh, the side menu for multivariate, which opens up a new window, and we can see all of our variables here on the left hand side. The fixed factors, which is our groups, which is sexual orientation, we move that into the fixed factors box, which is the box in the middle right, and then we're going to move across two dependent variables. One is, the first is the email hours per week, and then our second dependent variable is family income. We're going to click on the plots. Uh, we're going to move sexual orientation to the horizontal axis, and this is going to help us produce some plots. And then we're going to click on the add button, and the add button was in the middle of the screen, and so that will add, add the sexual orientation to the plot chart. And then we'll just click continue, and that will return us to the multivariate screen. Now we want to run a post talk, and the post talk for MANOVA is similar to the post talk with ANOVA. The test in itself, ANOVA and MANOVA, will tell you whether or not there is a statistically significant difference in the in the um, in the groups in comparison to the dependent variables, but it will not identify which of the groups are actually different from each other. That's where we run the post talk um, test, and for MANOVA. Just like with ANOVA, we can always use the two keys. And so we would click on post talk, which is the radio button. I'm going to move across sexual orientation to the post talk test. And then down below, I'm going to just uh, click on the two keys button. And I'm going to click continue. Now we go back and we um, click on the options radio button from the multivariate uh, window. We're going to uh, move sexual orientation. I want to see the uh, descriptive statistics, so we move that to display means for, and then we're going to click on the check boxes down below, descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and as uh, Kim and I were speaking earlier, when it comes to power analysis, it's good to um, report the effect size, and also we want to report the observed power, and this is all very important for those of you who are in dissertation when you do your data analysis in chapter four to uh, present the um, the effect size of the analysis and also the observed power of the analysis. Then we'll just click continue and then we're going to click the OK button for our output. And as always, uh, SPSS puts out lots of tables. The first table I want to bring to attention is the descriptive statistics table. And we can actually see that for when we look at sexual orientation, and we've got um, three groups. You've got gay, lesbian, or homosexual. Then we have bisexual, and then we have our third group is heterosexual or straight. And then we show our total. So when we look at email hours per week, we can see that for gay, lesbian, homosexual, you now there's a mean of 8.96, and then for bisexual, 4.31, and then for heterosexual or straight, it's 6.43, with a total average mean of 6.41. And we can see our standard deviations for each of the each of the groups in the next column, and then we can actually then we see in the last column the sample size for each group. So if we look at total, we'll see that from the GSS 2014 data set, we have um, 1,273 participants in our sample size. But then we've got for gay, lesbian, homosexual, it's there's 25, and then for bisexual, it's 42. And if we look at the next row, which is the family income, we have the same three groups. And then we can take a look at the means, where gay, lesbian, homosexual is at 34,000. And this is, you know, these represent uh, annual income, so it's in dollars. For bisexual, we've got about 19,677. And then for heterosexual or straight, we have about 35,987. So just, and then of course we have the corresponding uh, standard deviations, and then our sample sizes again. Looking at these, at the descriptive statistics, we can we can somewhat identify that 
um, gay, lesbian, homosexual do not vary so much from the heterosexual or straight for both the email hours and also family income, but the bisexual group is actually uh, notably lower. As we move on to the, uh, the next table, we're going to look at the multivariate tests, and we're going to focus on the Wilkes Lambda. Um, SPSS puts out a lot of different combinations, but for this example, we're just going to focus on the Wilkes Lambda. And so we can actually see what our, um, I've highlighted in uh, yellow, we can see that our F test at, at, at 2.77, but we've got our value at 0.991. And if we go across to the SIG, which represents our P value, we'll see that our SIG value is 0 0.026. So it is less than the 0.05. Um, and so we know that we have a statistically significant result or finding by running our, our MANOVA. Um, we've got our partial eta squared, which is a reflection of the effect size. Um, and then if we go to the last column, we've got our observed power, which is 0. Uh, 0.765. So it is a little bit less than um, the 0. 0.80 that we're used to working with for um, power, but that's just what came out of this particular example. The next table we look at is the test of between subjects effects. And <clears throat> here we can actually see we've got sexual orientation. And it's highlighted in yellow again. And we can look at we've got email hours per week, our sum of squares. And we can see that email hours per week, if we go across to the SIG value, once again we see that it's 0.259. So for um, email hours, there's really no significant difference amongst the email hours per week. However, but for family income, if we look just below, the SIG value at 0 0.010 is um, a significant difference. And then, once again, we've got our partial eta squared, so which is our um, effect size for each, each group. And then we can look at our observed power again. In our next table, we've got, this is our post talk our multiple comparisons and this is how we figure out um, where there is a uh, difference between which groups because it's a bit more detail and email hours per week um, there was no significant statistically significant difference if we look at all of the um, combinations under SIG they're all much greater than 0 0.05 however for family income we see the bisexual group um, compared against heterosexual or straight it is significant at 0 0.007. So we can say that there is a difference between um, family income of the bisexual group compared to the heterosexual or straight. But notice that there's that the comparison between bisexual and gay, lesbian, or homosexual is not statistically significant. That's uh, 0 0.220. So this is one of the reasons why we run, or the most reason, important reason why we actually run the, um, the postdoc multiple comparison so we can see where the differences actually are. And if we look under, if we look at family income where it says bisexual and just below it where we see heterosexual or straight, since the postdoc runs um, the same comparisons just uh, with the three groups, that's where we have six different combinations here, we can actually see that heterosexual compared to bisexual the SIG value is 0 0.007, which is the same as what we have comparing bisexual to heterosexual or straight, which is highlighted in yellow. So there's no difference there. All right, so for the plots, because this is why we actually ran the plots, so we can actually see um, a bit better or with better clarity, we can see that um, for email hours per week, we can see that the bisexual group is, is Quite lower, uh, quite a bit lower than the heterosexual or straight group, and then regarding family income, we see something very similar as well. Gay, lesbian, or homosexual, um, and heterosexual or straight are up up around thirty-five thousand annually, where the bisexual group is around twenty thousand, and that's a reflection of our descriptive statistics table, which I just wanted to show again, just so so you can all see that. So getting to the APA star write-up for MANOVA. Um, now this is just a brief template just to show um, some of the information that you'd want to include. 
um, to investigate the research question, uh, is sexual orientation a predictor of email hours per week and also family income? A one-way multiple uh, analysis of variance, one-way MANOVA, was conducted. The analysis showed a statistically significant difference in email hours per week and family income um, based on sexual orientation, where we have our F value of, of 4 to uh, 2,538, equaling 2.77, P less than 0 0.05, the Wilkes lambda equaled 0.991, with the partial eta squared equal 0 0.007. The post hoc to key HSD showed a statistically significant difference, P less than 0 0.05, for the outcome variable family income for the group bisexual compared to the group heterosexual or straight, with a mean difference of negative 16,309, with a confidence interval of negative 2,875 to negative 37,000, I'm sorry, uh, 3,743. Therefore, the null hypothesis is, is rejected and the alternative hypothesis is retained. So, of course, uh, when you write up your uh, results for your MANOVA, you go ahead and plug in your numbers, but you have to go back and read it to make sure that it actually does make sense. And then you may want to expand um, presenting other uh, statistical findings which may be uh, important to your particular research question.